Good evening. I'm Wendy Jakubiak, the Director of Nursing Education at Western Oklahoma State College. On behalf of Western's administration, board, faculty, and students, we would like to welcome you to the 29th Annual Penning and Lamplighting Ceremony. It is my privilege to introduce our special guest. First, I would like to introduce tonight's platform guest. They are Miss Monty Reed, freshman instructor and coordinator, Elk City. <laughs> Ms. Estelle Guerrera, freshman instructor, Lawton. I love you guys. Ms. Brenda Phillips, freshman instructor, Altus. Ms. Kathy King, freshman clinical adjunct, retired faculty, and our speaker for tonight, Dr. Phil Burdine, president of Western Oklahoma State College, Ms. Crystal Overton, dean of technical education, Ms. Lisa Greenlee, Vice President of Academic and Student Support Services. Ms. Tricia Latham, Vice President of Business Affairs. Mr. Larry Duffy, Vice President of Development and Alumni Relations. Ms. Elizabeth Stevens, Clinical Coordinator. Ms. Karen Snyder, Sophomore Instructor Lawton. Ms. Christy Greer, Sophomore Instructor Altus. And Ms. Jennifer Zachary, Sophomore Instructor and Coordinator, Elk City. I would like to recognize our special guest in the audience at this time. We have Mr. Kent Brooks, Dean of Learning Support Systems and Chief Technology Officer. Mr. Chad Wigington, Dean of Student Support Services. Dr. Tony Coakley. And Mr. John Phelan. At this time, I would also like to have a special thank you to all the adjunct faculty that are present tonight. These faculty are an integral part of our teaching, the clinical aspect of our program. It is also with absolute certainty that our community businesses and organizations have provided our nursing program with many types of support that have made our program what it is. 
I would like to recognize these guests from the area hospitals and clinical facilities and say a special thank you to Jackson County Memorial Hospital, Comanche County Memorial Hospital, Memorial Hospital and Physicians Group, and Great Plains Regional Medical Center. Finally, I would like to thank each parent, spouse, child, and employer for supporting these graduates. I know it's been a hard two years, three years, four years, however long it's taken them to get here, but it's, it's wonderful to see that they have such support and loving um, family with them. At the end of the ceremony, we invite all of you for the reception down the hall at the Multipurpose Center immediately following the ceremony. Thank you. And Dr. Burdine is going to um, give a welcome speech. Thank you, Wendy. And let me say on behalf of the Western Oklahoma State College Board of Regents, our administration and executive team, our faculty and staff, we certainly uh, welcome you to tonight's ceremony. I don't have to tell the graduates how hard they have worked. This is an acknowledgment of the hard work, the many hours of study, sacrifice, labor, frustration, uh, you name it, joy. You've, you've ran a gamut of emotions, and it culminates tonight in this ceremony. We are extremely proud of you at Western Oklahoma State College. We're proud of what you represent. We're proud of what your hard work has, uh, th that has brought you to this point because it signals a, a beginning for you in life and we're proud to have played a small part in that whole process for you. To the family and friends of these uh, graduates, uh, you know, we can't thank you enough for, their su for, the, for your support that you have offered them. Uh, we're really pleased that uh, you probably helped them to make the decision to come to Western. We can't thank you enough for that, and we really are eternally grateful for that. So we want to commend you on your efforts to support them as they have uh, reached this point tonight. And lastly, uh, the faculty and staff at uh, Western, through the uh, leadership of our regents and our uh, admin and executive team, uh, we just want to say that we are extremely fortunate to have uh, this many graduates of this outstanding program uh, here tonight. The legacy of this program is unmatched. The administration of the nursing program uh, really works hard and I don't get again I don't have to tell you what they put you through in order to bring you to this point but we're proud of their efforts to get you to this point. And we're proud of the services available to you at Western Oklahoma State College. Again welcome to tonight's ceremony and graduates congratulations. You can tell it's my first time. Um, I forgot the invocation, the prayer. So if at this time, Ashley Hunzel will come up and say the invocation. Hi, guys. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, how mighty and wonderful you are. Thank you for allowing us to gather today and celebrate this wonderful occasion as each one of us moves on to a new stage in our lives as our ends. How truly blessed we are. I know we all have had our ups and downs, stress and joys throughout these past two years. But as we press on towards our goal as nurses, thank you God for always being there no matter what. I pray, Father, for guidance and direction for us all, and that we will follow in the path you would have us to go. Thank you for your love and dying on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Tonight, we continue the tradition of passing the flame of knowledge from the graduating class to those who are halfway through their journey.
The lamp stands for the profession of nursing and the challenges it entails. The flame represents knowledge, which is the foundation of nursing. Those who are completing their first step toward the profession of nursing pass on the flame of knowledge to those who are seeking to become registered nurses, and they accept this flame of knowledge in hope that they too will attain the goal they seek in the profession of nursing. The graduating class of 2011, being represented, represented by Patricia Levain, Jennifer Galen, and Anne Marie Hayes, will now pass on the flame of knowledge to the class of 2012. You want to go on that side and I'll light it for you? Oh. Okay. Okay, and now we'll have the freshman representatives come up and recite the Florence Nightingale Pledge. I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to practice to pass my life in purity and to practice my profession faithfully. I will abstain from whatever is deleterious and mischievous and will not take or knowingly administer any harmful drug. I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standard of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge in the practice of my calling. With loyalty will I endeavor to aid the physician in his work and devote myself to the welfare of those committed to my care. It's with pleasure that I get to introduce our key speaker tonight, Kathy King. Kathy graduated high school in Port Clinton, Ohio. 
and in 1967, she got her Diploma of Nursing in Toledo, Ohio. 1987, she got her associate's degree at Western Oklahoma State College. 1989, she got her Bachelor's of Science in Nursing, and she followed that up with her Master's in Nursing from OU. Kathy has worked in hospitals. She's retired from the Health Department. She's retired from WOSC. She still teach, or she works as adjunct for us here at WSC, and she still works labor and delivery at Jackson County. She's got all the money in the world. She's got 15 or 20 retirements coming in. <laughs> now, I want to tell you about Kathy King. When we, I started this five years ago, it was the first year that we had had distance campuses. So I go to Elk City, Marvella Starling goes to Lawton, and Kathy's at Altus, and it's going to be smooth. First morning, we couldn't connect. ITV was not up. They were just sitting there looking at me, and I was trying to be very professional, which later on I gave that up. It's not my... <laughs> anyway, I'm like thinking and thinking. About an hour, I panic, and I call Kathy, and I said, Kathy, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? She goes, it's going to be okay, Monty. She said, just have your students open their books and kind of go through them, read the chapters. I said, I can't. She said, what do you mean you can't? Do they have their books? I said, yes, but I couldn't take them looking at me anymore, so I gave them $100 and sent them to McDonald's. <laughs> and she said, it's going to be OK. <laughs> the first year I taught, you know, you worry about strokes. I thought, I'm going to stroke, I'm going to stroke. And she'd say that all the time. It's going to be OK, Monty. Calm down. She was that way for four years with me. I, there's not been a day past this year that I haven't missed Kathy King. I took over her position as the freshman coordinator. I should have known some of those duties. I didn't. I sat back and let Kathy do it and then tell me what to do. So this year has been rough, but I've called Kathy, I've texted her, and she's never let me down. She's a good friend, a good person, and I love her. And would y'all please welcome Kathy King. Well, thank you, Monty. Um, you can't tell how many times I've laughed and cried with you, and we did survive. And Retirement is just around the corner. We need to see you. <laughs> well, students, um, I have three hours worth of lecture here, so if you don't mind, let's just get to it and pay attention. <laughs> just kidding. You thought you were going to get the sex talk, right? What a great evening. Look at you all. I'm just so proud of you, and you all look great, and uh, it's a wonderful evening. Congratulations to all of you. Tonight, I think that when I, how I look at this is that you are closing a chapter in your book of life, aren't you? And you're beginning to open a new chapter in your book, and that's really exciting. Some of you will take on new jobs in a new facility. Some of you are going to go back to the same place you've worked before. Irregardless of that, though, what are you doing? You're taking on a lot more responsibility, aren't you, than you ever have before. Is that scary? It should be. You know, perhaps that is. But it's exciting, too. It's an adventure. Life is an adventure. Um, did you ever think that you would get to this point? It seemed like an eternity, and then again, it seemed like just yesterday, didn't it? You freshmen out there, I've had the opportunity to work with um, the Altus freshmen on OB. Uh, I've enjoyed all of you. Uh, you can look forward to sitting in those honored graduate seats next year. Seems like an eternity, too, but by golly, you're going to get there if you work hard, you focus on what you need to do, keep in mind what your goal is, and you're going to graduate too. You can do it. I'm going to step away from the podium just a second so I can model what I'm wearing.
Anyone recognize this costume? <laughs> the title of my speech tonight is Out with the Old and In with the New. Guess who's old? <laughs> yes, this is what registered nurses used to look like. White dresses, no pants, white hose, white shoes, and our precious caps. Oh, I love my cap. Each school of nursing had their own style of caps that they could get. Now, we had a capping and a pinning ceremony so very many years ago, much like what you're doing, only we don't have caps anymore, do we? So the freshmen, if they survived their first year, got a cap. Now, mind you guys, there were no males in my class, none. So I don't know what the guys would do if they got a cap, but anyway. The second year students got a blue stripe for their cap, and the graduates got the coveted black stripe. Oh, we were so proud to get our black stripe. And we also got a pin. Each school had their own pin, just like you're getting, that was representative of their school of nursing. My graduation year, as Monty said, was 1967. That was only 44 short years ago. <sighs> Guess what? In 1967, children were still dying with polio, whooping cough, measles. A lot of you grandma and grandpas out there, you remember that, don't you? That was only 44 years ago. There was no HIV or AIDS, but getting a diagnosis of leukemia or cancer was a death sentence back in those days. There was no cure. There were no IV pumps. We had to calculate the drops per minute. And maybe if you're in India, I hope that you can do that, right? There was, uh, we started IVs with a needle, like a scalp vein needle. The needle stayed in the vein. There wasn't any plastic catheters. Disposable medical equipment was just beginning to make their entry into the healthcare market. We still used glass syringes and we reused needles. Can you believe it? We didn't wear gloves for anything except sterile technique. Woo, I'm telling you. Lots of patients got NG tubes. How many of you got to put an NG tube in? Ooh, quite a few of you, that's good. Patients stayed in the hospital for seven days or more just by getting their gallbladder out. We um, had enema cans, and in those cans we put bars of soap and water. We reused it over and over again. I know. <laughs> Documentation um, of all patient care was handwritten in a nurse's note. Now we had black pens for the day shift and blue pen ink for evenings and red for nights. Get this. We didn't learn anything about head to toe physical assessment. Oh no. No heart sounds, no lung sounds, no bowel sounds. That was the doctor's job. We did vital signs, but we were not allowed to tell the patients what the vital signs were. Again, that was the doctor's job. And we didn't want to overstep our boundaries ever or we'd get in big trouble. Yeah, those were the old days. And it really wasn't so very long ago. Wow. Hasn't nursing changed a lot? And, and we have grown as nurses in knowledge and responsibility from those days. So in with the new. That's you guys. You're the new ones. One day I'm going to look up when I go to the emergency room with my heart attack, and I'm going to look up, and I'm going to see the new nurses with lots more skills and, and abilities than I ever thought I would have. I'm excited for you, but it's bittersweet for me. This class of 2011 was my last class to teach before I retired. 
and it's really kind of sad. I tried very hard to give you a sense of what it meant to be the good nurse, not just the knowledge that you learn from the books just to take a test, but also um, not even the skills that we practiced. But the, but the right way to be a, nur a good nurse is the one that can treat every person that you touch with respect and dignity. That concept is not new, and I hope it won't go out with the old. This should continue to be your practice regardless of where you will be working. Respect and dignity for every person that you see and touch. You will face many, many challenges in your career as an RN, as I did so many years ago, and I still do even today, many challenges. But there's just a few challenges that I wanted to mention tonight. Actually, there's five. The first one is, what? Past state boards. That's a challenge, isn't it? It's on your mind every day, probably, and will be for a little while. You need to pass that exam. You're graduating from an excellent school of nursing. Do you know that? Western has a great track record. We have wonderful, knowledgeable, sometimes funny instructors. You have clinical instructors. All of them want you to be successful. Um, so you do have the basic knowledge that you need to pass this exam. Take as many preparation courses as you can afford. Two, three, four, take them. You can always pay the money back later. Um, that will increase your chances for success. But mo more important is what you've got up here in your head. Do I mean brains? No. Well, that helps a little bit. But what really is, is what you have in your head. What I'm saying is that you have to have a positive attitude. Be confident in yourself. You've been given the knowledge to pass that test and you can do it. Hear me out just a second. You know what's going to make you fail? Anxiety, self-doubt, that's going to get you. That'll be your worst enemy. Now you've practiced all those HESI tests, those computer tests, right? More than you ever thought you would, and you had to pass a certain level to be able to graduate. You can pass state boards. You can do it. This was a tough nursing program, but it's prepared you to go past that state board exam. Okay, here's a Kathy King tip. What I want you to do is when you sit down in front of that computer to take that licensure test, I want you to stop for just a minute. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Put your shoulders down. Relax your arms, relax your legs. Don't go to sleep. But then the most important part of that is do your self-talk. The self-talk is in your head that says what? I can do this. Say that as many times as you need to. I can do this. Just a tip, by the way, is that this technique that I just said will get you through many, many, many nerve-wracking patient care crises when you have to stay calm. You have to act. You have to react, maybe to save a life. So that's a good technique to practice. It's like prenatal classes, you know, when you practice the breathing exercises. The second thing is technology. I think that's a challenge. Most of you have heard me say that I think computers are the antichrist. Have you heard me say that? Out with this old lady, in with new, that just loves Facebook and texting and Twitter and I don't know what all that stuff is. And I don't Twitter. The data that you need to take care of your patients and all that you do to them and all that you do for them will be recorded in some kind of a computer system. So you have to learn to like it or at least to use it. I hope that when these computers don't work that you'll be able to function somehow. Thank goodness for Melissa Hurst, wherever she is, 
and Kent in the IT department because they helped me survive through the technology. So you will need to keep up with technology or maybe you should just retire like I did. That was the easiest thing to do. Take all the classes and learning opportunities that your agency offers for you to keep up with technology. New equipment arrives all the time in hospitals on a regular basis and you need to be competent to learn to use it. Let me caution you though right now. Always remember that you have a real person to care for who needs a human touch and family members that need to be reassured that their loved one is being well taken care of. Don't treat the machine, treat the patient. The third thing on my list is a challenge called consumerism. So what in the heck is that? The definition of consumerism is the protection of the rights and interests of the consumers of health care, especially with regard to price, quality, and safety. Our patients are now called customers, by the way, and these customers expect to give get very good care. There's very little tolerance for mistakes. Soon, funding for hospitals will be tied to the patient's reports on a survey that they get when they go home from the hospital. In this survey, they write down how they perceived their care when they were in the hospital. So what's gonna happen? This is gonna create incentives for hospitals to improve their quality of care and you nurses are going to be a big part of that movement to make our patients satisfied with their care from the time they enter the front door until discharge. So all of you will need to step up and focus on delivering quality patient-centered care. The fourth thing is evolving nursing practice. Our scope of practice as nurses continually changes. What we can do and what we can't do is mandated through our state board, right? There's more responsibility and liability than ever, ever before. You gotta know the rules. You gotta play by the rules and be careful when you decide to deviate from that. You can lose your license. What are your agency policies and procedures? When you start a new job, you're gonna get several books to read of policies and procedures, but you must follow them. It's through nursing research that interventions evolve and improvement of patient care outcomes happens. I don't want you to be the nurses that are stagnant get in a rut that says, but I've always done it that way. I don't want to learn a new way to do anything. By the way, never quit learning. I know you're sick and tired of school. Some of you are real motivated and will go on, and I really encourage you to continue your education. Get your bachelor's degree. Get a master's in nursing. And why not? Get a doctorate. We need you to elevate the profession of nursing through new ideas and strategies. You guys are gonna come up with new ideas. And lastly, number five, enjoy being a nurse. Be proud of who you are and what you do. I want you to be excited to go to work, happy, and look forward to what the day will bring. You need to fight this thing we call burnout, and it may happen to you. If you get up and you dread going to work for whatever reason, make a change. Unhappy nurses don't provide very good care. Nursing offers so many different avenues for you to work. If you want to make a change, there is hospitals, there is uh, community nursing, cancer centers, rehabs, wellness centers, patient education, nursing education, administration. I can go on and on. There's so much you can do. So there's no need for you to get bored. It will take some time to change from the novice nurses that you all are and change into that expert, expert nurse that we all hope you will be. 
Hey, it's a nursing process. Does that sound familiar? I bet you thought you'd never hear that again. So are you up for the challenge? Florence Nightingale wrote that nursing would need to continually evolve in a way of knowing, doing, and being in the world, deepening our understanding of the nurse as an instrument of healing. So the nurse is an instrument of healing. That's a big job. You can make a difference in the life of each and every person you take care of. We instructors from time to time uh, hear from someone out in the community that says, hey, I had one of your, your nurses that graduated from your program took care of somebody, and they gave very good care. I might ask that person what it is that our nurse did to give very good care. What would they say about you? Hmm. Were you kind and caring? Did you stop by to visit that poor, elderly, lonely woman down the hall, hold her hand, give her a smile? Did you listen carefully to the laboring woman's concerns and give her reassurance and encouragement? Did you reassure the patient about to go into surgery and tell them, you're going to be in very good hands? Did you provide comfort to the dying cancer patient? Not just that morphine shot, but a back rub, a sip of water, and maybe change their gown. Did you ask the family, what can I do to help you? If you can provide that kind of care, our job here at Western is done. And you're well on your way to becoming bright, shining stars in the lives of many who will be entrusted to your care. So, out with the old, like me, who still wish they could wear their caps and white uniforms to work, in with the new, scrub-wearing, intelligent, competent, successful, younger, cuter, graduates of 2011 Western Oklahoma State College School of Nursing. Hoorah! The tradition of the nursing pen and the ceremonial pinning originated in the 1860s at the Nightingale School of Nursing at St. Thomas Hospital in London. Having been recently awarded the Red Cross of St. George for her selfless service to the injured and dying in the Crimean War, Florence Nightingale chose to extend the honor to her most outstanding graduate nurses by presenting each of them with a medal for excellence. It was the Wolverton Royal Hospital School in England that initiated the tradition of presenting all graduates with a badge. The first pin was awarded to the graduating class of 1880 of the Bellevue Hospital School of Nursing in New York City. At Western Oklahoma State College, nursing program pinning has been a tradition since 1983 when the first class graduated. The pin for our nursing program was created by Barbara Long and Dorothy Mahaffrey, and each part of the emblem has a particular significance. The faculty will now present the class of 2011 their nursing pins. Paulette Adams Delaney. Denise Aguilera. Have a 
Jana Alcorn. Tiffany Almanza. Pietra Alves. Elise Bailey. <laughs> Rochelle Balagai. Christy Bartlett. <laughs> Christy Bass. Christy is being pinned by her Courtney Weskey, her cousin, who is a 2010 WSC graduate. Lindsay Bickerstaff. <laughs> Ashley Britt. Vanessa Burkett. <laughs> Elizabeth Bynum. Pauline Seltzer. <laughs> Stacy Chisholm. Yin Choi. <laughs> Janet Collier. 
Janet's being pinned by her son, Robert Collier, who's a 2010 graduate of the WSC nursing program. He thought he wasn't going to have to come back. <laughs> Lauren Cox. Brandy Jo Crabtree. <laughs> Vicki Davis. Tremel Davenport. <laughs> Nathan Duran. Amy Early. <laughs> Tanya Evans. Vanessa Francis. <laughs> Tanessa Furphy. Amy Garlington. <laughs> Jennifer Gallion. Vanessa Gavon.
Danielle Giannetti. Stacy Griffiths. Eric Guerrera. <laughs> Shelby Gunnels. Ashley Hunzel. Brenda Hood. Kelsey James. I did it again. Sorry. It's just keeping people in. Robert Ingerson. Crystal Jessen. Jordan Johns. Robin Cobb. <laughs> Jennifer Koontz.
Patricia Levine. Michelle Lee. <laughs> Jessica Lehman. <laughs> Jessica's being Pinned by her aunt, Tracy Wills, a 2007 WSC nursing graduate. <laughs> Janelle Lewis Brown. Jessica Lindsay. <laughs> Tia Martin. Bethany Miller. <laughs> Teresa Miller. Jeremy Montgomery. <laughs> Jolene Morgan. Simon Mulu. Jacqueline Mundy. <laughs> Ashton Nagabar. Jennifer Nix.
Monique Nordeen. Dana Perry. Anna Fearson. Carrie Ratliff. <laughs> Matthew Rosenquist. Kendra Michelle Schoolfield. Charlotte Sears. Rachel Shaw. Angela Shelton. Angela is being pinned by her niece, Sarah Kelly, a 2002 graduate of WSC. Kimberly Shelton. Susie Shelton. <laughs> Rachel Solis. Rachel is being pinned by her sister, Leah Edgar, a 2006 nursing WSC graduate. Nicole Thomas. <laughs> G 
Gloria Velez de Torres. And baby, future nurse. I'm so glad Kathy's here. <laughs> Geneva Walker. Vanessa Walker. <laughs> Marion Wetzel. Jennifer Williams. <laughs> Megan Wilson. Danielle Wood. Oh, you better get those. <laughs> Let her up. Let her up. She can come back. Oh <laughs> Hannah Young. And last but not least, Linda Zinn. I present to you the class of 2011. We're not done yet. We still have a few awards to go, and then we'll say the benediction, and then you guys can go. Yes, I do have some awards to give out. As you know, we have LPNs 
included in our nursing program now. So we have traditional students, which are not LPNs. They're just uh, went through all four semesters. And we have the non-traditional students, which are the LPNs. We have several awards. And the first one is going to be the Traditional Student Excellence in Nursing Achievement Award, Best All-Around Nursing Student Voted by their, their Peers, Tanessa Furphy, Altus Campus. Yes, this award was voted on by all the other classmates. The, the, these were the ones that were chosen. From the Elk City campus, Megan Wilson. From the Lawton campus, Denise Aguilera. Congratulations. The Non-Traditional Student Excellence in Nursing Achievement Award for the best all-around LPN nursing student as voted on by their peers, Elk City Campus, Angela Shelton. Altus Campus, Janet Collier. We have one more award. This is for the Academic Award of Excellence for the highest GPA from all campuses throughout the nursing program, including general classes. It goes to Jennifer Galen from Elk City. Thank you all. I'm going to miss you. I just want to thank everybody for coming and attending tonight. And you've been very patient. We wanted to make sure everybody got their pictures. Afterwards, we will have a reception. And if you'll wait to leave until the recessional is done and the students um, walk out, I do want to have a special thank you to the, um, Jim Joplin, who's playing the piano for us. He's our administrative assistant at Lawton. 
and to Melissa Hurst and Mary Hamilton who make us tick up here. Without them, we couldn't keep it together, so. And Angela Shelton will now give the benediction. If you'll all stand as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to come and celebrate the accomplishments of the graduating class of 2011. Thank you for the faculty who have shared knowledge and wisdom with us. Thank you for family and friends who have stayed beside us through thick and thin. They've encouraged us when we were ready to give up and supported us in every aspect. Continue to bless their lives abundantly. I pray for the freshman class that you would give them knowledge, wisdom, and perseverance to complete this course next year. And I pray for the graduating class that you would just remind us that without you we're nothing. Help us to continue to learn in our new jobs and help us to keep an open mind and a compassionate heart. As we leave here tonight, keep us safe. Give us a safe trip home. For it's in Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen.